Okay, now that we have our boundaries, I want to bounce the ship off of these boundaries. And you may be wondering, Jamie, why did we cut off all of this part of our playing field? The ship can no longer fly over here, or over here, or over here, or over here. And to be honest, um, no particular reason except we need to learn dot products. And this is a great uh, way of doing dot products. We'll use this dot products a lot throughout the course of this game engine playlist. Let me draw the coordinate axis. Remember this is positive y. This is 1 and the positive y. This is 1 and the positive x. This is negative 1 and the x. And this is negative, or sorry, the y. Oh, man. Negative 1 and the y and negative and the x. All right. Remember we set up these vertices like so. So this one is, we could really think of it as a vector position instead of a vertex. I like to think of these as vectors, but this one is at position 0, 1, 0, 1, and I'll even use the vector syntax like so, and then this vertex right here, stretch it, is at position negative 1, 0, like vectors like so. So, there's two two problems we need to solve. One, has the ship crossed this boundary? And then if the ship has crossed this boundary, we need to reverse its direction in relation or with respect to this boundary. We just can't reverse the, the y direction. We can't just reverse the x. We have this angled arbitrary wall. And so that's what we need to consider in, in these videos. But the first thing I want to consider is, hey, did the ship cross the boundary? And the way we're going to do that is by taking these two vectors. Let me put the vector tip on this one. And if I take this vector and subtract this vector, what does that give me? We haven't done any vector subtraction yet, but but it's, it's pretty simple. The formula for vector subtraction is the components of this vector minus the components of this vector. So let me write this vector down first. Negative 1, 0, and then uh, 0, 1 here. So minus 0, 1 equals, well this should be simple, negative 1 minus 0 gives me a negative 1. And then 0 minus 1 also gives me a negative 1. Okay, again, review Khan Academy, if you like, for vector subtraction, addition, all those sort of things. I'll try to give you what I can in these videos, but it is really that straightforward. Negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1, and 0 minus 1 is also a negative 1. So you may be thinking, okay, negative, uh, negative 1, negative 1, so then the resulting vector would be this, like so, which is correct. That is correct. I'll even, I'll even uh, put the coordinates here. I hate to say coordinates, but the the elements of the vector. How about that? But if you look at this vector, if I take this vector and I move it to right here, okay, I just pick it up and instead of drawing it in standard position with its tail at the origin, instead I move it up here. Well, it would land perfectly right there. So one cool thing about vector subtraction is that it gives us another vector which if you position that vector between the tips of the two vectors you just subtracted then it points at the first vector in the equation. And it points at this one. Right, every time you see subtraction think I'm making a vector whose tail, if I positioned it at the tip of this vector, will point to the tip of that vector. So that's vector subtraction. I have a little tool here I want to show you. Hopefully this looks familiar. We've used this in, in videos before. And remember, we have the scalar times a vector. You can see I put the angle brackets here as best I could to, to denote a vector. And then we can say add or subtract another scalar times a vector. So if I if I grab this first vector, you can see I extend this out like that, and then we can go up or down. I think that looks a little bit better. Just kind of give us a, an idea here. And you see here, I'm, we're adding the vectors. We've done vector addition before, where I take this vector, 
And if I add it to this vector, notice the second vector, I haven't drawn it in standard position, meaning I haven't drawn it with its tail at the origin. I put its tail at the tip of this vector. Well, if I add this first vector with this second vector, the result is a vector that starts at the uh, tail of the first vector and goes to the tip of the second vector, so vector addition. Nothing new there. We've done that with translation and moving the ship. Well, notice I can click the subtract button which which uh, will subtract the two vectors. And before I hit the subtract button, can you tell me or pause the video and think how how will this diagram change if I if I hit the first of all I'll tell you my GUI when I hit subtract it'll move this second vector. It's going to position it right here. So let me actually position it for you. If I take this and copy it, well we can look at it. it's one uh, 2.65 so one one, two point six five, roughly here, maybe a little higher, and bring it down to here as best I can draw a straight line using a mouse. Okay, if I move this vector over here and then I subtract this vector from that vector, what will my resulting red vector be? Pause the video, think about it before I do it. Okay, here we go, drum roll, click subtract. You can see, hey, yes, I did move that. A second vector here, and then we subtracted this second vector, this vector, from this vector, which is also blue, but I'll make it green, and then the result is this this red vector, its tail from here to, to tip. Now, one thing you'll hear a lot with linear algebra and vectors is that, yeah, we can move them around, and moving them around doesn't change anything. However, every time we do some mathematical operation on vectors, think of them in standard position. I've diagrammed this where I've moved the result out here just so you can see what it means geometrically. But but uh, remember, standard position, all of our transforms, our rotation, translation, our scale, all that is res with respect to the origin, meaning the vectors must be, their tails must be at the origin. Uh, for some reason, nobody ever said that to me, and it took me forever to to wrap my head around the, the significance of that. Anyway, so there you go, vector subtraction. And that's the first thing we're going to need to, to discover whether the ship crosses the boundary or not. And, and we'll explore what future videos, meaning the next video, <laughs> we'll look at what else we got to do to see, hey, did the ship cross the boundary or not?